Businessman Nathan Tinkler has had an extraordinary rise from electrician to billionaire, so much so that his hometown Newcastle was dubbed Tinkler Town. The entrepreneur bought the sports mad city's two major clubs and a swag of other local businesses after making his fortune in mining. But things are souring for Nathan Tinkler quite rapidly, with creditors across the country chasing their money, some of them using the courts, in a series of actions that could bring his empire crashing to the ground. Connor Duffy reports. When you report, when you report, and we'll support you It's game day for the Newcastle Jets, and the team's hardcore supporters are in full voice, hoping to see gun new signing Emil Heskey score against their arch enemy, the Central Coast. As kickoff approaches, the beers flow, and many pay tribute to owner Nathan Tinkler, who they say turned the club around. I can't knock Nathan. We wouldn't have a club if it, was, if it wasn't for Nathan like this. Nathan came in, made the changes that need to happen and brought the community together. He united everyone and that's what we needed. Nathan Tinkler bought the Jets in September 2010. And rugby league side the Newcastle Knights in March 2011. The former electrician and sports fan likes to be seen as a blue-collar bloke. People tend to draw a lot of conclusions and all this sort of stuff about, you know, what you like based on what they read or hear or see or some bloke down the pub or whatever. And, uh, you know, um, I, think the, I think the wealthier people are perceived or something like that, the, the taller the tales are, so to speak. But, you know, I'm still the guy that uh, a lot of guys in the Valley worked with and know and played football against and all that sort of stuff. But his creditors are growing and circling. How's it going, fellas? How you going, Bob? Yeah, good, Bob. Bob Jeffkins has run a building company in Newcastle for 48 years. We had to get a bit heavy handed. Not that you want to do that, but uh, you've got to do it when you're talking about big money being owed for a period of time and all your phone calls seem to fall on deaf ears. And, Nobody wants to talk to you. The Jeffkins Group were owed $400,000 by a Tinkler company for subcontracting work on this Newcastle school. After months of not being paid, Jeffkins eventually got its money by complaining directly to the school. A lot of people seen him as a great white knight with the Jets and the Knights. and uh, Yeah, but I, I don't think there's too many people think that now. I really don't. I wouldn't care if I never did another job for them. Is that because it was difficult to get your money? Yeah, because you, you get, after a while you get sick of it. You get sick of chasing them and be told stories that, that are true. Nathan Tinkler made his fortune in record time, turning a $1 million punt on a Queensland coal mine into a billion dollar fortune and topping the young rich list in 2010. Nathan Tankler really stands out for being the youngest billionaire ever in Australia, so it's very difficult for people to create a million dollars in their lifetime. It's incredibly difficult for people to create $200 million in your lifetime. So by the time of 35, he was worth $1.1 billion. So yes, it's an incredible rise. This year, his wealth was estimated at $400 million. A spending spree, the likes of which Newcastle has never seen, and falling coal prices are blamed for his sliding wealth. It's estimated between $200 and $300 million have been spent on horses, and a fire sale of Tinkler horses is looming at this year's Magic Million sales. A private jet has already been sold. After he purchased the Newcastle Jets, the Newcastle Knights were next in his sights. The Knights were technically broke. They couldn't have survived in my view and he was a, a blessing to come into town to uh, rescue the Knights. High profile players like Matthew Johns saw him as a saviour. But sometimes I suppose you need just one and that one is Nathan Tinkler. 
This coal miner turned coal magnate has turned the Newcastle Knights from paupers into princes almost overnight. I'd love to see the Knights on the front page of the paper for winning games and that sort of stuff and unfortunately too much of the, the press over the last few years has been about you know what sort of uh, you know disaster is off field or uh, you know the financial uh, commitments of the club or, the, or that sort of thing and uh, you know, that, that makes it very tough to win. Insiders who negotiated the deal say Tinkler played hardball and they were surprised by his aggression. Early in the negotiations, he wrote to the club pledging to forgive a $450,000 loan. I will have Troy work with Steve on the forgiveness of the outstanding loan as my final gesture of supporting the club. There is no more I can do. There was shock when three months later, Tinkler's right-hand man, Troy Palmer, wrote to them demanding the amount be paid in full that day. I will be over at 2pm to meet to pick up the cheque. I would assume there may be some people out the front waiting to see if I'm successful in getting my cheque. Today, questions over Nathan Tinkler's shrinking wealth extend far beyond sport in Newcastle, but he's not here to answer them. His Newcastle home is empty and plans to develop the vacant block next door have stalled. Nathan Tinkler now lives in a new luxury home in Singapore, citing the need to be closer to Asian markets. We're living in such volatile times at the moment. You know, we've seen that the mining magnates like Andrew Forrest and Gina Reinhart lose billions in days because of the stock market. And to a certain extent, Nathan Tinkler is caught up in the same volatility. So should things shift back, you'll see him win big again. Today, his lawyers averted a potential contempt of court finding, coming close to settling with property we'll giant Mervac. He'd missed a court-ordered deadline to pay $17 million, but today the matter was adjourned until next Tuesday, with a deal expected to be finalised Monday. He still faces another legal brawl, with coal company Blackwood seeking a court order to force him to pay $28.4 million. That matter is due back in court on Melbourne Cup Day. Other creditors are also demanding their money. Tim and Bruce Curry installed power to a Tinkler horse farm and two years later are still waiting to be paid more than $40,000. It is very difficult. We've obviously gone times where we haven't been able to pay ourselves, but make sure our staff and supplies get paid. But as I said, yeah, it's been quite difficult. We've been trying to work our way through it. They say a solicitor advised them pursuing legal action would be pointless as the Tinkler company they build is only worth $2. Yeah, we're resigned to the fact that we probably won't get any money, but we're not going to you know, die not trying because you know, we, we work damn hard for that. And um, you know, just to, to see it go out the window over something like that, it's wrong. The Newcastle Jets fans aren't giving up on their owner. I can't say a bad word about the bloke because, you know, he's done everything that all horse fans wanted. I'd say come back to Australia and fix this mess up because we're not the only ones. There's a lot of people in our position. There's probably a lot of people hurting a lot worse than we are. Yeah, a lot of little people too, which is sad. Connor Duffy reporting and 7.30 approached Nathan Tinkler for an interview, but he declined.